I know some of you are still setting up and all, but uh, sorry about that. Uh, I still haven't managed. I did. I, I did try. I promise. I did try to do this workshop over Cola, uh, which is the online version of Jupyter Notebook, but I I still didn't manage because it makes a lot of use of uh, terminal. After my chat with Johan yesterday, maybe I'll do it next time. Uh, hopefully. Um, I know we don't have much time, so I'm going to introduce very quickly uh, a bit of Ross. I'm going to talk a bit about Gazebo, not too much because we don't have time. And hopefully, what you can get out of here today is um, is mostly an idea of how Ross looks like. Yeah. I would definitely something about me. I don't know what to do. You were with I tried to install the button, but every time you've just been saying that. Do you follow the instructions on the website? It says that I'm able to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyone yeah. here using Ubuntu 52.10? That is, what do you mean? Okay, so if anyone's um, uh, on uh, the newer Ubuntu, uh, um, I'm going to wait until you record how Jamie Jelly Fish, um, then um, you might install other ROS packages and the repos. Um, so you can have to modify uh, the source bit to re um, with the Jammy Jelly Fish code name rather than um, anything new on that they need to install. Yeah, you copy the repos that are there. Yeah, I copy repos, I set up repos, basically synchronize the scale of the public repos. Okay, okay. Do you want to use the repos machine in the meantime? Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to use the repos machine. 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 Do I use the, the ones from the website or should I use the one that is? No, what do doesn't have any repo? It's the repos as well. Because they have they have Yeah, but they have So, which book have any problem Okay, guys. Um, Back to the introduction. Uh, I'm sorry for the problems. If, if, if you have extra problems, you can come uh, talk to me. I can help you out. Uh, I'm happy to get everyone on board with Ross. And hopefully today, what you can get out of this workshop, it's an idea of how uh, we work in the robotics world, because it's a bit different of like normal software engineering, I would say, or, or not the same as uh, uh, other softwares. And, and a bit of what uh, you can do with ROS and how, how would you use it. We're not going to build any uh, autonomous cars or like uh, killing robots, but we're gonna we're gonna get an idea of how to like tinker in with with this uh, with this uh, software. So to give you a bigger a bit of background for those of you that didn't get this a bit up, for those of you that didn't go. Um, so the, the presentation on uh, the first day, we um, in the, the, op the Open Robotics Foundation owns a few projects, and these are the main projects that uh, they're working on, right? There's a bunch of people working on this from many different um, uh, backgrounds. Uh, there, there's the, 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 the problem in robotics is huge, right? Like we don't. We don't have people that knows everything in robotics, so everyone picks like a very tiny part of the robotics problem, and they just work on it. And that's why I did my presentation on the first day, where I was trying to explain that this is a really important uh, having open source uh, taking over open uh, robotics is a very important point that made robotics move forward, because no one uh, can really make uh, the entire thing. Uh, on robotics, like the problem is too big for not not only a single person, but not even companies can make that can solve the entire problem by themselves, right? So because we have open source, that is what is allowing us to to overcome these these boundaries. So the main software that the foundation uh, owns is uh, ROS, and it started back uh, in, more than ten years ago, and at that time the robotics. Uh, field was mainly focused on research, so the the main focus of this software was was for researchers, right? It was very easy to set up. It had something that they could work on, and and there were no extra things that you had to worry about. 
Um, but then there was a slightly change in the robotics world where uh, a bunch of startups started coming up and, and they all uh, they all started taking over uh, this work and then companies started also using uh, robotics and all that. And like a, a new set of, of uh, requirements came on. So people wanted more stability, people wanted more security. So there was a rewrite of the software and it's what we call now ROS2, right? So that's why I'm, I'm trying to get everyone on board with ROS2, uh, so we can we can learn the latest the latest software. ROS1 still running, and I think I have a slide with the with the releases, so you guys can get an idea. So there's a there's the la the latest release of ROS1 is Noetic Gemis. So we always use turtles for for names, uh, and that will be supported until 2025, but it's it. It's already the latest, the last release that is going to be done on ROS. There's some community work for, for continuing ROS 1, but that is out of the foundation and it's not going to be supported from an official standing point, right? Then we have Gazebo, uh, which is the simulation uh, environment that the OSRS uh, offers. And it, it doesn't have to be used with ROS, but of course it, it has a lot of packages that make it makes it very easy to use with ROS. Um, there's, there's, there's Ignition, which was a rewrite of ROS in a similar way of what happened with ROS2. So there's, there's, there was a, a few requirements that wanted, uh, people wanted to, uh, to meet, and then Ignition was a decoupled version of, of Gazebo. But then there was a name conflict, so now it's a bit complicated. That's why I wanted to put the name here. So if you see Ignition these days, it's basically Gazebo. You won't see it. You won't see it around because it was renamed after a while. Uh, it's basically Ignition uh, is now named Gazebo, and Gazebo is now the Gazebo Classic. It's, 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 it's known the old Gazebo, right? So just in case you see this name around, just you can ignore it and think about it as Gazebo. So there's two versions. There's one that is called Classic, which is the old one, and there's one that is called Gazebo, which is what they uh, initially was called Ignition. Uh, a bit complicated, but uh, yeah, uh, have to live with it. And then we have OpenRMF, which is the software uh, that we are developing here in Singapore. And it was in, in collaboration with many local uh, institutes and, and companies. And it's mainly uh, using, uh, of course, we use uh, Gazebo for simulation and ROS uh, for the communication part, uh, but it's mainly for infrastructures uh, to try to allow uh, vendors to communicate uh, robots between each other and also communicate with the infrastructure. It has uh, task management, uh, traffic allocation, and, and, and all these capabilities. Okay, so a bit about ROS. Uh, there's a video here, but in, in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip it. Uh, there's a very nice video, if you guys have time, uh, that the Red Hat guys made about the story about robotics. I think it's called uh, Robotics Revolution. And it's got four parts. I think each part is about like 10, 15 minutes. So it's a very nice, uh, much nicer than the introduction that I can give you guys here. So if you guys have time, you can you can have a look at it. Let um, me skip it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what is ROS? This is this is what we always how we always present ROS to people. So basically, you got four uh, key features on ROS. One of them is the plumbing. So this is the basic thing that ROS gives you. Because in robotics, we use this, uh, this component-oriented programming. So you basically have different, different components talk to, talk to each other, right? So if you have a camera, you would have your camera capturing images. And then that, that will be one component. And then this component will communicate with another one. And then these images will be processed in, in this other component to, to, I don't know, detect a person or detect a hand or, or, or do some processing of this image. And there will be different parts of components that will, talking, will be talking to each other. So this is the plumbing that we're talking about. And this is mostly what we're gonna try out today. So we're gonna try out this plumbing and see how these components can communicate with each other, uh, mostly through the terminal. Uh, we're probably not going to be uh, work writing any code. And and then uh, we're going to maybe play around a bit with the tools. 
So there's there are certain tools that you can use on top of this that have been created by uh, uh, a lot of people, the community and the uh, OSRS itself, uh, like RPD or, or any others that allows you to introspect what is happening here. And it also allows you to like uh, visualize frames. You can see like a, a, an entire kinematic tree depending on, on what is going on, right? So in the products, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of debugging and a lot of like uh, problem solving and, and you really need these tools to really um, introspect what's going on, right? Um, then you got the capabilities. So as I said, there's a lot of people that is doing uh, different things in robotics. So you get the guys that are doing navigation. So there's the nav, the nav tool stack. So there's an entire group of people that is doing this thing. And it's totally unrelated to the guys that are doing control or the guys that are doing, uh, for example, the uh, stack for moving arms, kinematics, right? The movie two, which is the the, 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 the guy's the, uh, from Picnic, for example, it's a, an entire company that is, that is doing this part, right? Uh, at least in charts, so there's always a community behind. Um, so these are the capabilities that we have. And then of course the ecosystem that the entire open source community is offering. So you got this course, you got the, the conferences, because, because this entire ecosystem where you can just reach people and say, hey, I have this problem. I'm trying to install this. It's not working on my computer. Can I use this thing? Uh, there's, there's the working groups that you can join. Uh, so it's 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 also complementing the, the entire uh, set of capabilities that you can get with ROS, right? So a little bit of the uh, ROS 1, ROS 2 comparison here. Um, so I think one of the main things that everyone sees when uh, when was using ROS and now is using ROS2. So these communications between components that I was talking about, uh, in ROS1, there used to be a, a process called the ROS core, and you would have to set it up all the time. And there was a guy in charge of telling which components are where and, and how to communicate between each other, right? So you say, hey, uh, camera, give me the image. So you need someone to tell you where the camera is, right? Like in the, what is the uh, 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 the process that is running the camera, and, and if I can call this function get image, and then I can get it, right? So that ROS core was uh, what had to be always running. That was a single point of failure, and everyone like was uh, complaining, right? Like they was like, oh, if, if this ROS core goes down, my entire robot goes down. So it's a system that is not very robust. So one of the biggest changes in ROS2 is that we use DDS for these communication uh, uh, channels. So now DDS has a distributed way of uh, uh, discovery. So with this distributed discovery, you don't need a, a, a ROS core. You don't have a single point of failure. Uh, it's not perfect. It also gives some problems when you cannot broadcast and, and, and all those stuff. But um, it's, 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 it's way more robust. And the, the thing that the new design comes from comes with is that the DDS implementation, uh, it is agnostic, agnostic to the DDS implementation. So there's different vendors for DDS that they provide this DDS layer. And there's, there's basically a, a cross middleware uh, layer um, that gives an abstract. So you can basically use ROS2 with different DDS vendor. So you can see here um, uh, that we can we can use these softwares for communication. And there, there are different implementations. So Farsa TDS is one implementation of DDS, and Cyclone is another one. So sometimes, depending on how the vendor implements DDS, uh, they might have uh, better or worse uh, capabilities for your application. And some people decide to go with one. Some people decide to go with the other one. Right? Depending on on metrics or or, or whatever um, uh, um, what, whatever capabilities they they need from the vendor. Sometimes they they don't even have a uh, security plug plugin implemented. So maybe you need the security plugin. Then you might go with fast uh, RTPS. Uh, I believe Cyclone doesn't have it, or I think they they added it later. So that is for, uh, one good example that you can um, you can run. And then just focusing a bit more on ROS2, uh, basically you, you have your hardware, you run your operating system. So one thing that always people get very confused, 
ROS uh, stands for robotics operating system. No, it's not an operating system. It basically runs on top of uh, an, a real operating system. Uh, I know, you gotta be careful when you make this, right? Um, yeah, so it basically it runs on top of an operating system and it's basically a framework that you can use for robotics. Then you have the DDS layer, which is the one talking to, uh, make it, uh, making the talking to each other possible. You have the uh, media, uh, abstraction layer that we have to be able to change this. And then we have different um, uh, languages libraries. So you got uh, RCLCPP, RCL5, and basically these libraries allow you to write different components on different languages. So you can have components in uh, one component in Python that is talking to another node that is doing uh, C++, right? So you can have all this entire ecosystem that is totally heterogeneous, right? This is one of the things that actually allows ROS to be so distributed, right? So you have the guys doing navigation and they have their own components uh, with whatever design they have and whatever languages they decided. And then you have your other guys doing control uh, with a new different design and with a different thing. And then you can integrate this thanks to this uh, uh, model, right? Thanks to the component oriented model. So again, a uh, little bit about the releases that I mentioned before. ROS1 has uh, the Melodic, which has uh, one moment of uh, support, and then it will dash. And then this is the later, uh, uh, latest uh, ROS1 release, and it's the last one. So this, this one is, uh, is, is actually it was supported by five years. So after this, there will be more support for ROS. Ross one. Um, okay, these are the releases for Ross two. So we got Foxy here. Uh, you can see the Ubuntu versions. So as I as I mentioned before, when we were uh, doing the setup, there's uh, they usually match uh, an Ubuntu version. So you can't really you, you you can always install it from source, right? But the compiled binaries are created for a certain Ubuntu version which is usually the latest that is around when we uh, are creating the, the, uh, the release. Uh, I believe the, so the, the life of, the, of these releases matches the life of the Ubuntu version, right? So if the Ubuntu lasts this long, then the, the, the release will last this long. So, and now we have this rolling release, right? So the rolling release is basically, um, where we push the latest changes, and then every time we're gonna have a stable release, we just branch out of rolling, right? So we have this, all these packages that are the latest, and then when Galactic comes, then we create a branch, and then we can just... Uh, Um, grabbing images all the time and it's publishing them on a topic, right? So basically topics come in, in the name of like something like slash and a name and then you can use this to say, hey, I want the, the message that is being sent on slash and this name, right? So for example, a typical topic would be slash camera. So we have slash camera and then that that would be the, the topic where the images are being uh, published. So from the node that is subscribing, uh, I can say, hey, subscribe to dash camera and then get the information here. And then I will get the data in my uh, uh, data structure, no? whatever data structure we're using, we will be getting uh, all, this, all these images uh, that the camera is getting. That is the... Uh, 
how it's described, and then it doesn't have to be like one to one. So you can have one guy, the camera can be publishing these images, but then you can have different nodes doing different things, right? So you might have one node that is detecting humans, and then you might have one node that is detecting tables, right? So you, you can distribute this as much as you want. Um, you just need to subscribe here to the camera topic and here to the camera topic, right? Then we have services, which is basically like uh, what, for those of you that, that uh, uh, use RPCs, it's just basically like calling a function that is in the other node, right? So you can, in, in the example of the camera, you can use the service and you can say, instead of having the camera uh, publishing the image all the time, you just say, hey, give me an image now, and then you get a response, right? It's a different, uh, a different way of communication. And then at the same time, you can also have different nodes requesting for the same thing, right? Uh, and the service provider will be answering in, in the same way. And then we have something that is a bit in between that is called actions. So basically actions involve uh, a client, of course a client and an, an action client and an action server, uh, but you can, you can see it as a mix of the other two, right? So basically you do a request for an action, which is, this is meant for like long-term goals, right? So let's say I, I have a robot and I want the robot to get to the table, then I say, go to table, right? And then I make this request and then I get a response of that request, right? Like this, this uh, service that we called before, I do like a, a service request happens and then the robot says, okay, go into the table, right? That is the response that I get. So I know the robot started going to the table. But then there's a feedback token, right? So you can say like slash that status, right? So maybe in this status, the robot is like uh, moving, right? You can have different or, or stop, right? Like you can have different, uh, maybe someone pass in the middle and then the robot says, okay, stop, right? And it's still going to the table, but it's in status, the status change, right? So this feedback topic will allow you to keep getting the information of what is going on, right? And then at the end, at the end, um, there will be a, a response of, of the, uh, there will be like another request and, and it would basically say, hey, I finished the entire thing and the, the, the action is finished, right? So this is, uh, this is meant for like long-term um, processes, like a bit more uh, of just, like, instead of like just one uh, piece of information, right? So, yeah, let's get a bit into the ROS thing. Um, I'm going to run the, let me check if I have, mm -hmm. so I don't want to take so much time. Uh, okay, so for those of you that got VirtualBox, you should have something like this, right? Uh, uh, uh. And if we go to the GitHub page, which is the one that we're going to follow, there's a few text install. You can get the install instructions uh, also there. And there's a click. There's a there's a link to the install instructions. Um, and then one thing that we usually do, because in ROS is very common to have uh, many versions of ROS installed, um, we don't recommend to use them at the same time. So we don't recommend to have a robot talking uh, humble and then, uh, or, or some parts of the robot in humble and then some other parts in Foxy. We don't recommend that at all because it's not guaranteed to have compatibility. Uh, you can try, but uh, usually, you, you, you mess around with, with several versions, right? So because this happens, there's usually they're all installed in OPT ROS and, and you will have the number, the code name, the code name of the, of the release over there. So what we do is that before starting, you have to source this, this setup bash, which will set up your, your, uh, your terminal environment basically for, um, uh, to access all the binaries that ROS is offering uh, and all that. 
Um, so that, that is the first thing that you have to do. If you, if you know that you're going to be using a certain distro for a very long time, then you can put it on your BISRC and then uh, it, it's always there, right? But uh, personally, I mess around with a lot of them. So basically, I just mostly, most of the time, I just make an alias for the source and I say like humble is my alias and then I just, I just run it, right? So like if we do this on the virtual machine, yeah, let's go in. All right. So we open a terminal. Right? So if, if, if I open a terminal and, then, and I try to write something like ROS, then there's nothing there, right? So the first thing that we have to do all the time is to source OPT, ROS, Humble, and then we have this uh, bash file there, right? Set up. There's a bunch of setup files. So once you do this, you already have ROS, uh, the, the, the environment uh, ready, right? So now you have, you can see that there's a ROS2 binary there. And if you run it, you can see the, the options that you can get, right? So you can do actions, you can do bags. So bags are basically a way to record what is happening on this communications channel. So one thing that you can do is that you can, one thing I, I said that we do a lot of, a lot, a lot of testing in robotics, right? So one thing that you can do is to um, record all these topics going on. And then once you record all these topics, then you can replay them. Because you can replay them, you can basically have, you can, let's say you're walking in, your, in, in the lab during the day, and then they close at two, and then you have to go home. Well, you don't have access to the robot anymore. But you have a recording of all these topics, so you can actually uh, rerun all the topics, and it's basically like working with the robot again, right? And then it also allows you to reproduce the exact same thing that happened. That is very important in robotics, because problems are not, are very, uh, they're, you cannot, they're very stochastic, right? You can't, you can't really reproduce what happened in the one at that time because maybe someone passed by, the light was not the same, a lot of things can happen. So if, if you have a ROS back, that allows you to reproduce the exact same moment and you can see what, what is the error that actually caused uh, whatever breaking thing that happened in that, in that moment, right? So corner cases are very, very important in, in robotics. Uh, there's this, this demon thing, block doors. Uh, the, uh, most of the the most important one are the ROS node one, uh, which allows you to mess around with nodes. Uh, run that basically let, lets you run uh, stuff, uh, binary uh, binaries, which are these these ROS nodes. Uh, launch allows you so there's launch files that they will launch files are in our XML. You can do them in Python now. So it's a, there's a new uh, option to do them in Python, but originally they started in XML, and basically they are um, they are um, a way to set up the uh, an entire a bunch of uh, ROS nodes that you want to run with all the parameters, right? Because usually you end up having very complex uh, setups. Like let's say you have a, a big robot, right? So this, this guy can, can run like maybe 20, 30 ROS nodes with all its parameters. So you don't want to keep typing all this all the time. So basically what you have is you have these launch files, which are basically descriptions of I want to run this ROS node with these parameters, and I want to run this other one. So all these description, you can just do ROS launch, uh, and you, do, uh, you, you pass it a launch file, and then it will set up the entire thing uh, uh, in one time, right? So that is a, a, a very important one. Uh, and then you have topics and services, and you have actions over there. So you can basically see, so like if you do um, ROS2 topic, for example, which is a very typical one, then you can see that you can list the topics, right? You, you can also, pub, you can also uh, publish and subscribe directly from the, from the terminal. And, and you, can, uh, you can echo whatever is happening on, on a certain topic, right? So we don't have much time, uh, but I want to uh, show you the how to run a node. So if you, if you go if you go to the first one, cross two. 
So there's a package called TurtleSync, which is the one that you will find in, if you go to the ROS tutorials. So this package um, is basically, it's a very simple, So it's a very simple example that you can play around with. So if you guys set it up and run, you can see that. Um, so one thing that you you will also notice is that we use a lot of terminals when running ROS. So every time you run a node, you might have to open another terminal and all that, right? Unless you use launch files. But you will see a lot of these uh, robotics guys opening a bunch of terminals. All yeah, right. And then I have to source again, remember. And then I can do list, right? So if I do ROS2 topic list, you can see that I have some starter topics here, right? So these starter topics will actually allow me to move this startup around. So if you guys um if you guys uh start playing around with these topics you can send different uh messages that will make this turtle move and there's this also it offers services so you can also play around with the services that's another um another option and i believe it also offers it also offers an action, so you can also play uh, play with it, right? So this one will will do a rotation and will keep giving you feedback until it's done. Um, I think we don't have much more time, so I'll leave it there. Um, again, sorry for the uh, the delay, but uh, it, it takes a long time to to start uh, running this. Uh, that's why I wanted to have this this GitHub page. So whoever want, uh, whoever has the ROS2 running can go around and play around with the turtle. That will be a very good way to start. And I wanna um, and then I wanna also mention at the bottom there is a small part where you can play around with code. So you can create your own workspace, and then you can start you can start working with your own workspace. So yeah, basically, hopefully, you got an idea of how the communication works, and then it's just a matter of you guys uh, playing around with uh, the rest of the of the commands that you have here. If you had troubles installing uh, running the virtual machine or anything uh, related to ROS, let me know. Uh, I'm going to be here in the robotics track until it ends, and I'm going to be in Post Asia uh, until uh, the end, too. Uh, we also, I think we're going to Hackerspace later work after the, um, uh, after the conference, but feel free to uh, chat with me in the coffee breaks or anything. Um, I'd be happy to help. Thank you, guys. Thank you.